welcome to the Spring Break edition of Tulsa Community College Metro News Television. I'm Andrew Chernikov. And I'm Andrea Dotson. Thanks for watching. We have an update for you on the house that TCC is building. The Lloyd family of West Tulsa already has a roof built on their Habitat house, thanks to the volunteer crew made up of TCC students, faculty, staff, administration, and friends. The TCC Habitat for Humanity crew meets in West Tulsa every Saturday until graduation in May to build the house. Progress has been positive, but the Lloyd family and the TCC Habitat for Humanity crew welcomes your help and donations to complete the house. To get involved with the Habitat House project, just stop by any TCC Campus Student Activities office to sign up and volunteer for a worthy cause. Metro News will continue to update you with the house that TCC built. In other news, it's midterm time. Students who need help with their classes may seek free tutoring from several learning laboratories on campus. If you need help in your foreign language class, whether you're studying Arabic, Chinese, French, German, Greek, Hebrew, Italian, Japanese, Latin, Portuguese, Russian, or Spanish, then go to the International Language Center in room 413. If you need help with reading comprehension and speed and your vocabulary, go to the reading lab in room 536. Also, if you need help with writing term papers and essays or need to work on a word processing computer, then go to the Writing Center. The Writing Center also sponsors free workshops on writing, test taking, and MLA documentation. For specific dates or for free tutoring, stop by room 306. For students with math phobia, go to the math lab in room 302. Several tutorials are available and helpful staff are on hand to assist students in solving algebraic problems and equations. Again, the math lab is located in room 302. Besides tutorial services, students can take advantage of job placement and major matching at the Career Services Center. Here is Metro News TV reporter Ronnie Slinkard with more. Do you need a job? Are you searching for a major or a career? Then come by the Career Service Center in room 116 of the Metro Campus where friendly counselors will help you find a job and a career major that matches your interests. Counselor Sharon O'Neill says that nearly 300 to 400 students visit the center each semester to utilize and individualize program called Career Exploration. Could you tell us a little more about the Career Exploration Program? I'd be happy to. Basically what we do here in our office is help students make decisions. It's a free service to students who are currently enrolled. You can also get one hour's credit for it. We look at interest inventories as well as other kinds of assessments that will help people gather the information they need. Uh, Karen Leatherwood is our placement supervisor here. David Johnson and Becky Sossaman are both counselors here in the Career Center. So all of us are help want you to come down and visit with us. Thank you, Sharon. There are also interest, ability, and personality inventories and surveys that you can fill out. They will help you match your profile to a career or a major choice. And there are several handouts and printouts about a variety of majors and careers here. An extended part of the Career Service Center is the Job Placement Office in Room 149. Here's where students can be counseled on interviewing skills, cover letter writing, and effective resumes. The Career Service Center also sponsors on-campus recruiters from the Tulsa community so that students would have the opportunity to meet prospective employers right here on the Metro campus. Also, if you're looking for work, there's a job placement board outside the office in the lobby, across from the elevators. And there's a referral service that provides more employment opportunities for students and even TCC alumni. So if you are undecided about a major or need a job, come to the Career Service Center. Counselors are standing by. This has been Ronnie Slinkard reporting at the Career Service Center for TCC Metro News. Thank you for that report, Ronnie. And now for the events calendar. The Metro Student Activities is hosting free noon tunes next month. Coming April 12th is Duo Sonics, and coming on April 26th is Hot Rod and Cruisers. Both shows are from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. at the Commons. Free Popcorn Day is April 4th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the Drillers game and picnic is on April 14th from 6 to 10 p.m. at the Drillers Stadium. Tickets are only $2. Limit four tickets with a valid student ID. The game ticket price includes all-you-can-eat hamburger and hot dog buffet. 
A Midsummer's Night Dream will be presented as a concert at the TCC Metro Phillips Auditorium on March 31st, April 1st and 2nd. William Shakespeare's Timeless Play will be presented as a concert reading by the Oklahoma Indian Theater and Dance Company. The Friday and Saturday performance will be at 8 p.m. and the Sunday performance will be at 2 p.m. Stop by the Metro Student Activities Office for ticket information. And one final announcement. TCC Spring Break is during March 27th through March 31st. Classes resume on Monday, April 3rd. And that's the news for now. Join us next time as Metro News brings you information about the cultural photo shoot and the education connection. You can also read more about special people and special events in the current issue of Metro News Magazine. This has been Metro News TV, brought to you by the Journalism and Mass Communication Program at DCC Metro. Upbeat news for an uptown campus. I'm Andrew Chernikov. And I'm Andrea Dotson. From all of us here at Metro News, have a great spring break. There are also interest, ability, and personality inventories and surveys that you can fill out. They will help you match your profile to a career or a major choice. And there are, are still... Blah, blah. Okay, ready? And there are several handouts and printouts about a variety of majors and careers here. An extended part of the Career Service Center is the Job Placement Office in Room 149. Here's where students can be counseled on interviewing skills, cover letter writing, and effective resumes. The Career Service Center also sponsors on-campus recruiters from the Tulsa community so that students would have the opportunity to meet prospective employers right here on the Metro campus. Also, if you're looking for work, there's a Job Placement Board outside the office in the lobby.
to this last studio edition of TUTV. I'm Chandra Kovac. And I'm Jennifer Bowen. Today I will be interviewing James Plumley, who's a student here at TU and runs his own radio station. Stay tuned for time travel package and a student's music video. Up next is Marty and Ashley with the news. <laughs> Welcome. Yes, like Chandra said, the last studio edition of TU. Very last one. Yeah, but we're going to do a great job. That's I'm right. Marty Wadsworth. And I'm Ashley McIntyre. Hey, seniors, were you unable to attend the Senior Salute program on March 16th and 17th? Well, no problem. You can also pick up your cap and ground before graduation. Don't worry. Now, they can be picked up on either May 4th or 5th in the show tow room of the Allen Chapman Activity Center. Also, Jostin's representatives will be available from 10 to 4, so you also have the opportunity to purchase Clash Ring. Now, if you still need to order your graduation announcements, well, you're screwed. No, no worry. Just put in a little quick rush, pay a little extra few dollars, and you should have them in by time. Um, if you want to order those, call Jostens directly at 1-800-353-5299. If you have any other questions, call Vi Curtis at 631-2327. Well, it is April and you know what that means. Graduation is close and a new freshman class is trying to figure out what a credit hour really is. Well, we all know how overwhelming it is to be a freshman, and uh, so if the soon-to-be graduates could uh, give the freshman, the upcoming freshman, a little advice, what would it be? Well, the seniors had their opportunity to write into studentadvantage.com and do just that, and here's exactly what they had to say. It's pretty funny. Check this out. Uh, the first uh, one was, don't bring so much stuff. Uh, two was, buy a Brita water filter. The less direct contact your body has with the water, the better. Uh, I think we have it pretty good here at TU, though. Uh, lock the credit card away. It's only for emergency right <laughs> yeah right uh, talk to anyone don't brag about the Christmas at Christmas that you avoided the freshman 15 because it's coming during finals next spring yes it is and uh, yeah and this is one of my favorite I think this is pretty funny uh, remember that the freshman guys are only three months more mature than the seniors in high school that you know so that's a good advice I guess that's actually out, probably so. the most true fact right there on number probably, six so. but yeah you know we both still have a year left but if you were to give a piece of advice to the incoming freshman what would it be uh, um, kiss up to the seniors because they are the ones that have all the test files. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so start kissing up to me, freshman next year. You just right. want somebody to worship you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, my grades aren't that well, so don't look at my tests. Well, if you would like to send congratulations to some T fine students, well, I'm going to do that right now. All right. First, I'd like to congratulate TU's four Goldwater Scholars, Stephen McGill, Dominic Schulte, Andrew Bourne, and Clinton Campbell. Uh, these tremendous students were chosen for the premier undergraduate scholarship on the basis of academic merit from a field of 1,176 mathematics, science, and engineering students from universities all over the country. We would also like to thank uh, give congratulations to jo Joanna Michaelopoulos and Vijay Shanmugamani uh, for their awards at the Tri Beta Biological Honor Society research meeting at the OU Biological Station at Lake Texoma. Joanna won first place in the oral session for her presentation of phylogenetics of the green algae uh, genus Chlorococcum. Also won a Frank uh, won she also won a Frank G Brooks Award for Excellence and was recognized by the Texas Academy of Science for and outstanding outstanding presentation on a poster. Ooh, it's a tongue mouthful. Uh, VJ won third place for his presentation in the oral session. Both Joanna and VJ are members of TU's chapter of Tri Beta, the National Biological Honor Society. So congratulations to them. That's, That's awesome. That's a mouthful of names. I know. Yeah. I feel a little worn out now. Good yeah. job. Thanks. Well, the Division of Enrollment and Student Services needs your help. Well, they need several student volunteers to help them prepare for the second annual community dinner, a cat catfish fry and shrimp boil. Mm. Well, that's scheduled for this Friday, April 14th. If you can help at any time from 515 to 730, call Vi Curtis, popular girl around here, at 631-2328. How about some catfish and shrimp? Sounds good to me. I want to be there. You want to be there? It's free food. I'll give you some shrimp. <laughs> All right. Shrimp cocktail. <laughs> well, the TU Women's Studies program 
and the Graduate Student Association in English are hosting a lecture by Professor Marlene Barr. The lecture will be titled Future Females, the Next Generation, New Voices and Velocities in Feminist Science Fiction Criticism. It's got to be, it's got to, got to be good. It has such a long title. Uh, the lecture will be held on Monday, April 17th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in the faculty study of the McFarland Library. There will be a public reception immediately following the lecture. So you can go by and check that out. And uh, Definitely so, will. how much time do we have left? We got a little time. Wrapping it up. Wrapping it up. All right. Last well, desk. News. Yeah, it'll be wow. sad. It'll be sad. Well, right. anyway, check us out next week for the different show on the Bell's location. And uh, we'll see you again soon. And I'll see you in a few minutes. The entertainment report. I'll be back in a minute, too. See you guys next year. Ashley McIntyre back with this week's campus calendar and I know I'm in a different shirt now but what can I say I'm a quick changer so enrollment is this week so be sure to go and enroll it's kind of important if you want to start classes next semester which you probably don't want to but you probably need to right so um, TU Jazz Festival is Friday and Saturday each night from 8 to 10 and that's an ACK ACK and you can call the music offices at 2262 for more information Thursday the 13th Wild Wild West the movie you know with Will Smith will be showing an ACK ACK at 11 11 p.m. and it's free. I know 11 is kind of late, but you know, we're college students and it's free, so you can't beat that. The talent show is coming up April 20th, so keep a look out for that. And it's that time again for the Catfish Fry and the Shrimp Boil with the, featuring the Texas Zydeco Band. Well, you know, that's free food, so you can't miss that. Um, that's from 5.15 to 7.30 on the U, Friday, April 14th. And you can call Student Affairs at 2327 for more information about that. So that's it for me this week. Next week will be a little bit different on TUTV, so be sure to check us out. We'll see you next week. Joining us today is James Plumley, who's a student here at TU and also runs his own radio station. Welcome, James. James, can you tell us a little bit about your radio station? Right now, I've uh, set up a radio station to broadcast live concerts around the area, and just me sitting at home goofing off and just music or weather reports or whatever 24 hours a day and I've <clears throat> it's been okay it has about a mile radius on it so whenever I go out and do shows like live shows and everything people can come listen outside or bring Walkmans in the Flaming Lips did that for a little while or had a headphone concert or whatever but that's basically why I started it. it's for the live band aspect how do you handle putting a radio station on air 24 hours a day and going to school well you uh, you loop things a whole lot. You will leave it on and um, <clears throat> you can either run it through the VCR or run your CD player or, you know, I've been running uh, police scanners a lot actually and that just, that goes on all the time so you don't have to mess with it. Come home once every five hours and change something if you want to. How did you get started or interested in the radio? Um, when I was in eighth grade my dad told me about you know, being able to broadcast over the FM band, and I, <clears throat> I thought it was a good idea, but he wouldn't let me do it, you know, at that early. And then I realized you can order kits off the internet and build them yourself, small microwatt transmitters, and then you can do whatever you want after that, because it's that's legal. Microwatt is legal for the FCC. If there's a student out there who wanted to run their own radio station, how would they get started in that? There's uh, the only website I know of, there's um, dcelectronics.com. You can order kits and you just got to get a soldering iron and put it together. It's what are the startup easy. costs? Are there, is it high, low? $79 for a fairly decent one. Do you have any plans of maybe furthering your radio career in the future or extending? I, the, the FCC put out new guidelines about a month ago for low power FM where um, organizations can put up um, 100 watt stations, which would go about three mile a three mile radius, give or take a little bit. And I'd like to do that, but you have to go through an organization. So I'd like to do it here at TU, so we could have a radio station, 24 hours a day. But that's immediate. That's what I'd like to do. And the, Oklahoma got these. Uh, There's a lottery they drew, and Oklahoma is one of the first states that got picked. So at the end of the May, end of May, you can pick up an application and fill it out. So hopefully by then we can do it. Do you have any words of advice for any students that would like to either go into the radio career or maybe even start their own radio station? Um, 
I'd like to try to keep it non-commercial. That's that's a, the only way I'd like to do it. And I don't know. <clears throat> Not really. It's just goof off. Don't say any bad words. That's, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> Neighbors don't like that very much. But I don't know. Just have a good time with it, really, because it's fun. We've got a last couple of seconds here. Is there anything you'd like to say about your radio station? What frequency is it on? Or? It's 102.9, and if you're around 22nd Lewis, it's very clear. You can pick it up not too bad there. But it, you know, at shows, it'll be 102.9 concerts around places. And the, uh, yeah, that's about it. Well, thanks for joining us today, James. If you're interested, you can catch his radio station on 102.9, and it's on 24 hours a day. Up now, we have the campus calendar. Welcome back. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Well, if you'd like to keep it beautiful, don't forget Earth Day is Saturday, April 22nd. The Tulsa Zoo is pulling out all the stops. They'll have music, entertainment, crafts, lots of fun, and it'll run 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Well, if you prefer to celebrate in the air, try a hot air balloon ride. The Hot Air Affair caters to all occasions, and if you need reservations, call 832-0712. But if you're one of those people that like to celebrate Earth Day indoors, try the Tulsa Reptile Expo. That's right, the Tulsa Reptile Expo. It's April 15th and the 16th, running from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and it's at the Holiday Inn located at I-44 and Yale. Well, any way you slice it, it's going to be a busy week, so just remember, always keep an open mind and keep your hands in the bus. Don't forget to tune in next week for our special On Location show, and I'm Kay Barr with Community Calendar. See you next week. Good evening and welcome to this edition of TUTV Sports alongside Corrine Stoll who is back this week. I'm Mel Clonch. Tulsa fans were finally allowed the opportunity to view head football coach Keith Burns up, and, up close and personal this past weekend. Needless to say the former Arkansas defensive coordinator did not disappoint. The Golden Hurricane held its first open spring scrimmage of the season. The stopping grounds were a bit different, however. The Hurricane held the scrimmage at Cashaw Hall as turf renovations are still underway at Skelly Stadium. On offense, quarterback Josh Blankenship connected on 15 of 26 passes for 150 yards and one touchdown. But it was the TU defense that took the spotlight with six quarterback sacks and three tackles for lost yardage, holding the offense to 236 yards on 63 plays. The women's uh, tennis team set a record with their 16th win of the season. They played Wyoming and then Oral Roberts. And these two wins put the season record at 9-0. Now back to you. Thank you. All right, in golf news, Tulsa sophomore sensation Stacy Pomanasu placed third in a field of 85 golfers at the prestigious Ping Arizona State Invitational. Pramanasu shot a final round 2 under par 70 for a 54 hole total of 1 over par 217. Pramanasu entered the tournament ranked 7th in the nation. That's pretty impressive stuff there, some mm -hmm. of the nation. That's really now, impressive. Now, I just want to say real quick that I appreciate you coming on this semester, and I know next semester oh, you're kind blast. of bumped up with classes, so we yep. hope to see you sometime next semester. I have to be back next semester. It just depends on the classes and scheduling. Right. So. Well, we have one more show, and yes. that will be at Bells, guys, yes. so check that out. All right. That does it for sports, but the sports calendar is coming up next with Libby Bobian. Hey, Libby. How are you doing? Hello, and welcome to this week's sports calendar. I'm Libby Bobian. How you doing, Mel? This week's calendar is for the week of April the 11th. On Thursday, April 13th, the women's tennis team will take on Oklahoma State in Stillwater for a match that begins at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The men's tennis team will take on Texas A&M at Texas A&M on Thursday at 6 o'clock in the evening. On Friday and Saturday, the men's golf team will participate in an intercollegiate tournament in Raleigh, North Carolina. On Saturday and Sunday, the women's crew team will participate in the SIRA Championship in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And then on Saturday, the men's and women's track team will be in the John Jacobs Invitational. Also on Saturday, the men's tennis team will take on Rice at 10.30 in the morning. 
That's it for this week's sports calendar, but join me back again next week for an updated version. Sarah Wilson, TOTV producer, made a music video to enter into the student production contest for the Association of Higher Education Cable Television Administrators. Here it is. <laughs> in time travel and how it's done, then Keycon has a package for you about time travel at the movies. The prospect of time travel has intrigued many people ever since H.G. Wells' The Time Machine plunged far into the future. Many devices have been used to make the jump in time. They range from the DeLorean of Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future, to a gateway of light used by Cheryl Ladd and Chris Christopherson in Millennium, to an old dress in an attic in the two worlds of Jenny Logan, to a mysterious storm encountered by Kirk Douglas in Final Countdown, to the strange elevator ride of Connie Selica in Turn Back the Clock, to a slingshot trajectory around the sun in Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. But one of my favorites of all time is Christopher Reeve in Somewhere in Time, who by sheer concentration wills himself back to 1912 to meet an actress, played by Jane Seymour, who as an elderly woman had confronted him in 1972 with a pocket watch. Despite the objections of her agent, portrayed by Christopher Plummer, they begin to make plans together until the unfortunate finding of a penny in his suit pocket from his own time catapults him back to the future. H.G. Wells would be impressed. For TUTV, this is Keith Hahn. Up next is someone you've already seen today. Marty Wadsworth has your entertainment report. Yes. 
Uh, back to the Future. I, I just love it because it's Marty McFly. I love it. All right, I know I made a mistake a couple weeks ago I, when I mentioned uh, to you soccer goalie guy Matt Bong. I said that he stood in line to buy the new NSYNC album. My bad. He got online. He was one of the first people on the computer, on the internet, ordering the new NSYNC album. So Matt, I apologize. So Matt Ball, you're right. I'm wrong. All right. For some news. Well, little Cat, Cody Gifford, Kathy Lee's proud son. Guess what? He's going to try to stay out of the spotlight, but he's suing the National Examiner. Well, he's suing because the 10-year-old feels that the American media-owned examiner played uh, around with some facts, causing uh, Cody some mental damage, saying that he's a spoiled brat. The February 8th cover declared, Kathy Lee wrecking Cody's life, Pushy's mom, creating a monster. Well, big blah blah. The Giffords deny that Cody throws tantrums in restaurants and so on. Adding that the examiner painted Cody as an unruly child who is unable to behave in a socially acceptable manner. Who cares? Get over it, Cody. Well, Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson Lee, uh, they're in the news again for something that happened three years ago. Well, the former masseuse for the Motley Crue drummer and former Baywatch babe had a little run-in with the dog in their Malibu home. Doreen Cott was in the courtyard of the Malibu home when she found herself face to face with the dog. Dog stared her down and bit her in the butt. Well, nurse Pamela treated the masseuse's buttock wound. It was severely bruised and some nerve damage, according to the attorney. She's currently suing the couple, so that'll be all settled. Also being sued is the Jeopardy all-knowing guy, Alex Trebek. Well, you probably have heard some controversy between him and Regis, but I'm not gonna talk about that right now. Anyways, he's being sued by Marlene Andrade who is a 31-year-old United Airlines employee who's filed suit against Trebek claiming he threw a fit over his super bulging baggage and slammed a metal plate on her hand during the confrontation. The thing was, he had a really big luggage bag and he wanted to stick it through the little x-ray thingy, but it was too big. So he tried to lift the metal plate. Well, he can't do that. It's against the rules. So he got kind of mad when he got confronted by the employee. So he slammed the metal plate on the lady's hand and and now he's being sued. Big deal. Anyways, well, Annette Benning, who lost recently at the Oscars to Hillary Swank, well, she's a new mom again to her fourth child. And of course, you know she's married to, uh, what's his name? Beatty, Warren Beatty. Yeah, that guy. Well, the facts are they're not releasing any. We have no name, no birthday, no dimensions, no height, weight. We just know it's a girl. Well, this is the fourth child, like I said. So they have a five-year-old son, Ben, and sisters, Kathleen, Elizabeth, and Isabel Ira. I have no idea what the new baby's name because they're not releasing it. So let's go to the next story. Well, Keanu Reeves will star as a slacker who learns life lessons after coaching an inner city little league in his new movie, Hardball. And uh, John Cusack is in negotiations to star in the remake of The Sweet Smell of Success, originally played by Tony Curtis. Now for some weekend gross this past weekend, uh, Julia Roberts movie Aaron Brockovich dropped down to second place because Rules of Engagement starring Samuel L. Jackson and Tommy Lee Jones moved into first with a $15 million gross. Aaron Brockovich made $9.8 million and The Road to El Dorado made a little over $9 million. And that wraps it up for me, but most of you know we are in the final four episodes of 90210, Beverly Hills 90210, and Party of Five. So four more episodes left, so keep your VCRs. It's been 10 years. Ah, who cares? I'm saying that a lot today. Who just, who cares? It's almost summer finals. I don't care. So let's just toss on over to Mike Jakeledge with the latest movie review. I think he's going to talk about Drop Dead Gorgeous. So, Mike, take it away. Bye-bye. That's a cue for Mike. Mike. Jake Lynch. He's a good guy, I promise. He really is. I'll just sit here and look at the camera. Hey, how you doing? I'm going to LA this summer. <laughs> I've been in the shot today. <laughs> Okay, I've reached the point in the semester where I just don't care anymore. I don't think any of us do. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Alright, so like I'm just gonna fight through this movie review. Bear with me. I'm doing everything half-assed these days, so we'll just uh, work with that. Alright, hey, are you easily offended? Because then do I have the movie for you. That movie is Drop Dead Gorgeous, starring Christy Alley, Kirsten Dunst, and Paolo's favorite, Denise Richards. Huh? Yeah, yeah alright. Uh, anyway, this is one of the most wrong movies I've ever seen in my entire life, but at the same time, God, it's so right! Uh, you know, the film centers around the Sarah Rose uh, American Teen Princess Beauty Pageant, and it's very, very safe to say that this is a dark comedy. The pageant, set in Minnesota, seems to be surrounded by evil. Contestants are dying in tragic tractor accidents, which, as we all know, are always funny. They're not very tragic, I suppose. And their trailers are being blown to bits. Uh, other funny stuff includes making fun of people less fortunate than I am, and making fun of people from Minnesota, who, in my opinion, are all less fortunate than I am. Like in this clip right here. Sorry, Minnesota. <laughs> Doesn't that clip make you hungry? Uh, no. Okay, well the <laughs> only so thing that could possibly have made this movie any better in my eyes is if it were set in Wisconsin, which as we all know is like northern Oklahoma. Right. Yeah, uh, anyway, friggin' cheeseheads. Anyway, this movie may not be for everyone. Like a group that probably wouldn't enjoy this movie are, say, Catholic priests. Probably. They, they probably wouldn't enjoy this movie. But for everyone who laughs at other people's misfortunes as long and as hard as I do, this is absolutely the movie for you. Except for vegetarians, apparently, to that clip. Well, I don't know. It's dark comedy. Maybe they'll think it's extra funny. Maybe so. Because it was gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, yeah. I I'm guess, done. I have nothing yeah, to say. I, I have nothing more to say. I'm just ready to leave. Remember, I, I don't care anymore. So go over there. Take you to those hot chicks. You know, I don't know, Marty. I think that was a very funny movie, and I'm a vegetarian, so. You proved me wrong. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us today, but be sure to tune in next week for our on-location show at Bell's. We're going to try to see how much trouble we can either get into or stay out of. Have a nice evening. See ya. You're watching RBN, the Rollison Broadcasting Network. There is a in Salisbury, Maryland, the hungry are being fed. In Wind Falls, Indiana, a man who learned to read at 47 is making sure others learn earlier. Every day, someone in America is doing something to light up another life. But there is so much more to do. Light to do it is within us all. We only need to share it. Call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. You're watching RBN, the Rollison Broadcasting Network. The following program is brought to you by Lee Fagan Schools, the right place for your child's education. Black Eagle Enterprises, committed to a better Tulsa. The Rollison Foundation, concerned members of the community, and by the Wilson family, a family that is thankfully informed by the entertainment of the community. My name is Leon Rollison, and welcome to the show today. I think you're going to have a marvelous time with us. Hey, welcome to our show today. We have a lot of people to show you for guest hosts and hosts. And next on the mic is my man Hank. Hey, come on, Hank, hey, sing that song. Check it out. Ah!
Harriet Harris, and welcome to Community Affairs with our host, Catherine Rollison, Donna Wilson, Paula Briggs, Shelley Thompson, Tammy Gordon, Landra Batiste, and Leon Rollison. <laughs> Hi, my name is Leon Rollison, and welcome to the show today. We have a lot of wonderful things to show you, so we might as well get started. And the best way to do it is to start you with the Stop the Madness March, a march that we're one of the producers of and very proud to be so. So we're going to show you what happened during the march right here in Tulsa on Stop the Madness. <laughs> Walter Busby, Ethan Shoals, and uh, former gang member uh, Irvin Prophet, who will speak for a few brief moments, uh, letting us know how we can go about making a change. It is time for all of us to say that we've had enough of these things. Uh, that's why we've been working in conjunction with the police department uh, to get uh, the phone numbers listed where people can call for 
people uh, call anonymously and turn in drug dealers, turn in crack houses, and turn in gang members and let the police department come up and start to investigate. Because we live in the neighborhoods. We live in the community. We know who's doing these things. We know where they're taking place, but no one will speak for it. Now we have a way where they can speak for it, where they can call anonymously, and they can leave the, the, the address. And once it's left, the police will take it from there. And they won't come to your house, but they will check out the site where the problem is. I want to thank and ask everyone to come out for the march at 2 p.m. at Metropolitan Baptist Church. We'll start meeting at 1 o'clock, and at 2 p.m. sharp, we will start the, rap, the march moving up to Chamberlain Park and begin it promptly at 3 o'clock. Thank you. It's a great show. You're watching Community Affairs and Entertainment Plus. The show airs Saturday evening at 5.30 and Sunday evening at 7.30. Now, coming up on future shows, we're going to show you brand new talent in Tulsa, wonderful talent in Tulsa, such as Kathy Eaton. We're also going to talk to friends of Charlie Wilson of the Gap Band to find out what they have to say. Gap Band changed the phase of music where it is today. You know, all youngsters, everybody sampling, the funk, all of that, they did that. That's producer Terry Harvey. And we're also going to show you on future shows our clips of the Gap Band, the leader of the Gap Band, Charlie Wilson. <laughs> with us the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority and we have Alberta G. Jones who is a past regional director and also a past president of our organization yes. and we also have the present president who is Dr. Charlene Johnson and we just want to share a little bit with you about the sorority. A lot of times people have the idea that the sorority is something that we have on the school campuses and that it's nothing but fun in games but today we want to share a little with you a little bit about uh, what our sorority is about and I'm going to start with um, Mrs. Uh, Jones <laughs> and Mrs. Jones would just tell us a little bit about uh, the, the sorority and, and its history okay a uh, little bit about the history of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority it was established on the campus of Howard University in 1908. It is the oldest black Greek letter organization for women. We have 830 chapters in the United States and abroad. We're represented by regions. We have 10 regions. Uh, one is our international region. Each region has a regional director and that's the person who is responsible for trying to keep the members in the chapters informed in the Midwestern region, which is where we are and uh, where I served as regional director, that encompasses Oklahoma, Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, and what did I miss? You said it. I think, I think that's all. Okay, that's okay. it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And um, just like I said, we have our present uh, president here. And, and we want to talk about uh, the sorority being a service, it a is. community service okay. organization. And, uh, and talk about some of the things that we do uh, with our community. Uh, so uh, Mrs. Jones has given us a background and a foundation of what Alpha Kappa Alpha is about and our history. So let's talk a little bit today about uh, what uh, the Alpha Chi Omega chapter here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, what we're doing, what, what type of things are we involved in? Why don't you share a little bit of that with us? Well, we do several service projects throughout the community, but before I talk about that, I want to mention the fact that we also sponsor the uh, Theta Xi chapter, which is an undergraduate chapter at TU. And so we're still working with our undergraduates, uh, the chapter at TU, and we sponsor them and keep in touch with them so we know what they're doing and make sure that they're following the national program. In the 
Heights community, we have several service projects. Uh, this past weekend, we sponsored the uh, Breast Cancer Walk from Pine, from uh, that was North on Point. North Point. Mm -hmm. uh, we sponsored that one. We do that annually. We've done that for the past five years. Just that uh, we are a service organization and are proud to be a part of the community and hope that the projects that we sponsor, the organization itself represents the community and our giving back and our working with our senior citizens because we did not mention yes, that one. Uh, so we have several things mm -hmm. that we do that we're probably leaving some of them out mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. but we are definitely a service organization and we're proud to be a part of the community and to give back to the community some of the things that they give us. Well I want to thank uh, Alberta G. Jones for being with us today and Dr. Charlene Johnson. Thank you. And we want to thank you for joining us also. Hi, my name is Sylvia King. I'm the assistant director for the Miss Black Tulsa pageant. And I want to say that this is my first year working with the pageant and I have enjoyed it. We have an excellent group of girls. Each one of the young ladies are very talented. They are very smart. I am so impressed with them because not only are they beautiful, but they're intelligent. And what I really like most about the pageant is I have gotten an opportunity to basically grow. Uh, it was, it's been more of a challenge than I anticipated. My sister is the director and it's just been a challenge. It's been exciting. It has been more than I anticipated and I really have enjoyed working with the pageant. I've enjoyed the girls. I just look at the young ladies and I think about when I was their age and did I have the courage to do that when I was 17 or 18 and frankly no I didn't have the courage to do it but now that I'm involved I'm so glad that I'm involved with them. I enjoy each and every last one of the, the girls. They are just wonderful. This show has been brought to you by Lee Fagan Preschool, Black Eagle Enterprises, Leon Rollison Productions. watching Community Affairs, but don't go away because Entertainment Plus is up next featuring music, dance, and all forms of art. I'm Jaylene Osborne. You're watching RBN, the Rollison Broadcasting Network. There is a in Salisbury, Maryland, the hungry are being fed. In Wind Falls, Indiana, a man who learned to read at 47 is making sure others learn earlier. Every day, someone in America is doing something to light up another life. But there is so much more to do. The light to do it is within us all. We only need to share it. Call the Points of Light Foundation. You're watching RBN, the Rollison Broadcasting Network. Welcome to Entertainment Plus, the show that highlights the sights and sounds of the arts. This program is brought to you by the Rollison Foundation, Black Eagle Enterprises, and the Wilson Family. Hi, my name is Leon Rollison, and here on Entertainment Plus, we will show you all kinds of things, from modeling in the fashion world to music. Hey. Help you understand how much fun we had there. 
Now we're going to tell you all about the things that happen behind the stage. We're going to do it in parts, though, things that make concerts, concerts successful. We're speaking right now with Mr. James Easley. He's a concert producer. He does a lot of the concerts that come to Tulsa. We're going to show you the timelines behind the scenes on doing the concerts and what it takes to put them on. Because in this month, as well as the following months, we have a lot of concerts coming across, and we want you to know what's going on behind them. And this is a great show. Can you give us an idea about the timeline that it takes to put a show like this? What happens first thing in the morning? And can you give us a quick rundown on the timeline and all the way up to the performance? Is this from the time we call a, uh, call a booking agent until no, now? Or just for the day, uh, the day of show? The day of show. The day of show, the first thing you do and stuff is uh, low in. And then you have the equipment in. Yeah, load all the equipment in. show starts at 8 o'clock at night, believe it or not, stuff will work every minute up until then. Some people will be disappointed or upset with us if the show is 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes late. But uh, that's probably because something either broke down backstage and they're not aware of it. And maybe we're having some technical problems and stuff that they're not aware of. Or maybe a bus broke down, or maybe the production truck or whatever just not broke down and it caused us to get started late, late on the on all our setup and stuff. Definitely one of the super producers here in Oklahoma. We appreciate your time being here, and we hope to see you again on this show. Thank you. Now, coming to Tulsa pretty soon, will be the Tulsa State Fair. As a matter of fact, we have fairs already going on from the 4th of July all the way to the Tulsa State Fair. So be on the lookout for them. We're going to present them to you as we always do, and I think you'll have a lot of fun. September is always the month for the Tulsa State Fair, so you can always check out the big one when it comes then. Right now, though, we can say to you that we are into music, and music is what we're getting ready to present to you again. This is a band from Kansas, and they are setting the world on fire. We'll tell you about them.
music from the Tulsa State Fair. And now we go to Mount Zion Church right here in Tulsa to hear some beautiful gospel music. With Pat Moore there on the piano conducting the choir. Mount Zion Church. Said. On behalf of Leon Rollison's Productions, Black Eagle Enterprises, Lee Fagan Preschools, we'd like to say to you, have a good one. Thanks for being there. I'm Leon Rollison. Bye now. Also going to show you the wonderful sounds of Pat Moore and she plays the piano like you wouldn't believe. This program is brought to you by the Rollison Foundation, Black Eagle Enterprises, and the Wilson Family. This show has also been brought to you by the Creative Jazz Association, C-Jam, and the Rollison Broadcasting Network. Appreciate you being out there. On behalf of the entire staff and crew, my name is Leon Rollison. Thanks again for watching. See you the next time. Bye now. Of course.
Correspondence, right? Entertainment Plus, Post Office Box 3162, Tulsa, Oklahoma. You know trouble can start when the clock hits three. When there's no place after school. Nothing to do but hanging on city streets. When mom and dad are working to make ends meet, now it's time to beat the street. With after school programs, city kids aren't left alone and vulnerable. They keep on learning between three and six, but these programs need your support. Join with the Urban League to keep them going. Call now, because it's time to beat the street. C-Jam, Urban League of Tulsa, Minority Broadcasting, D Fagan Academy, NAACP, Leon Rollison Enterprises, Teach the Peace, Black Business Association, Greenwood Chamber, Uptown Networking, Brazen Vivine, John Starks Foundation, Eric Rollison Enterprises, Tulsa Business Association, are all working for a better community. You're watching RBN, the Rollison Broadcasting Network. The following program is brought to you by Lee Fagan Schools, the right place for your child's education. Black Eagle Enterprises, committed to a better Tulsa. The Rollison Foundation, concerned members of the community. And by the Wilson family, a family that is thankfully informed by the entertainment of the community. My name is Leon Rollison, and welcome to the show today. I think you're going to have a marvelous time with us. Welcome to the Leon Rollison Show. You know we're happy to have you with us. Now let's sit back and get ready for some exciting things for you to watch and hear. and welcome to the show today. We have a lot of wonderful things to show you, so we might as well get started. Talk about your motorcycles. We were at the motorcycle racetrack looking at bikes that do anywhere from uh, 140 miles per hour to 205 miles per hour. Lots of noise and lots of actions, but I think that you will really appreciate the power of the motorcycle and the motorcycle races. Big Man Fairchild was responsible for this, so let's go ahead and see what's going on. Now, at a motorcycle race, there are two things about your hearing. You either wear earplugs or you go deaf. by yourself. And hey, what's your speed? This is Michael, one of the fast drivers of the motorcycle races. He can clock somewhere and where in the nine. That means he can go from zero to a quarter mile in about nine seconds. Let's hear a lot of noise and see some tires burning.
pull up to the line and they burn rubber, get the tires real hot, and that makes a lot of commotion. Tires have to be hot in order to run, and this is one way to get them hot for sure. Then they wait for the Christmas tree to count them down so that they can make the quarter mile. Let's watch and see what happens. One of the things that I found fascinating at the racetrack is that there are people from all over America. There are, of course, locals, and they did very well at the track. But there are a lot of people from New York City, Washington, California, Oregon, and even the Dakotas. When there's an accident of any kind at the racetrack, there's always plenty of medical help and assistance right there before you even know it. Here's a gentleman that had a small accident, but before anything really happened seriously, the medics were there, they were able to take care of him. The racetrack is one of the safest places to be when there is any type of medical emergency. kind of bikes were here, the nitros, the turbos, the high performance, and also the stocks. They're all represented. These guys can go from Tulsa, Oklahoma City in a matter of minutes. The ladies are represented as well. Great time out here today. And do you think that all the bikers are really excited about the day and the weather holding up? And the bike that you're on, what is it called? What, what class does it run? Or what? Yeah, what class does it run? It runs super well. That means it's a high performance bike for sure. It will flat get it on. on the time? Oh. And, and how fast is that? 8.90 seconds. No, I mean, is that like 150 miles per hour? Or? Uh, it varies. I mean, the, the, I, around 140 to 150, I'd say, if you go by the, the speed. And where are you from? I'm from Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Yay, Oklahoma City. Well, thanks. Because you're waiting in line with the rest of them for the race to start back again. Yes, I can get started. And I know that you're going to be awfully fast on the bike. What are you running? What type of bike? 890. 890. Kawasaki Turbo. And does that mean, what kind of fuel do you burn? Uh, 116. 116. Yeah. All right then. Yes. And your top speed is what? My top speed is 150. That's pretty fast. And we hope you do well today. I'm trying to go fast. <laughs> You're from Oklahoma That's City? Yeah. We have a lot of people here from Oklahoma City today. Yes, a lot of them, yeah. All right. Do you guys ever get into a, a rival thing with Tulsa? Nah. Nah. Dallas. Dallas. Okay. So <laughs> we'll go out and find some people from Dallas and put there them on the table. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's mostly Dallas. And your name? Ronnie Williamson. Ronnie Williamson. Yeah. All right. Good luck out there on the track. All right. Thanks. And if 150 to 205 miles per hour is not your speed, a cup of tea, how about these? Or even one of the big trucks. There are all kinds of vehicles out there. Exotic bikes for sure. These bikes drew a lot of attention.
about this bike that we're looking at now? Well, it's a high gear fuel bike. Burns about 97% nitromethane. Scott here does the riding. I do the dirty work, he has the fun. That's, that's how it is when you get over. So and that's, that's why do you have the, the wide, such a wide tire on the back? like this run? Do you quote it by the mile per hour or by the elapsed time? Well, any bike wins by the elapsed time. This bike held the record at 751 at 176. And we have ran considerable faster than that, but that's what we held the record at. 176 miles per hour? Yeah. yeah. Are we, the wheels on the ground at that speed very much? The rear wheels always on the ground. The front wheels you got to let down the trip to light. Okay. There were even nitro bikes out there with two engines. One engine's not enough sometimes, they say. The gentleman here is running nitro. That means that that is a very high, powerful fuel. You put nitro on a bike and you turn into a rocket for sure. A lot of nitro bikes out there, and they put on quite a show, make a lot of noise. These guys are also number one in America when it comes to racing. A lot of power, a lot of horsepower, a lot of speed. Right here, this is my bodyguard. My spiritual guy. But he has it. Work my fingers to the bone. I let him ride the bike. I get a holler dad. Yeah. How about the blues? This is a group called DC Minor and this Shelby playing the bass for you. And coming up in the future, on our future shows, we're going to do a big show for you on this gentleman here. This is Byron Davis. He has a voice that you won't believe is very nice, thunderous. We're going to give you a sample of what he can do right now. Byron Davis. We're gonna What should you do to stop a friend from driving drunk? Whatever you have to. Well, that's our show for today. We're glad that you were able to join us. Until the next time, we'll see you. My name is Leon Rollison. Bye now. Thank you for watching. Again, you can contact us by writing Community Affairs, Post Office Box 3162, Tulsa, Oklahoma 74101. Thanks again.
This show has been brought to you by Lee Fagan Preschool, Black Eagle Enterprises, Leon Rollison Productions. watching Community Affairs, but don't go away because Entertainment Plus is up next featuring music, dance, and all forms of art. I'm Jaylene Osborne. You're watching RBN, the Rollison Broadcasting Network. On the big highway of life, there's only one safe place for kids. Back seat, baby. The front seat's not the best to drop out. Back seat, don't want that big old bag to pop up. While walking in a toy store the day before today, I overheard a crayon box with many things to say. I don't like red, said yellow, and green said nor do I. And no one here likes orange, but no one knows just why. Well, I bought that box of crayons and took it home with me and drew with all the colors so the crayons could all see. That each of us is special and everyone's unique, but it's when we get together that the picture is complete. C-Jam, Urban League of Tulsa, Minority Broadcasting, Lee Fagan Academy, NAACP, Leon Rollison Enterprises, Teach the Peace, Black Business Association, Greenwood Chamber, Uptown Networking, Razor Vivine, John Starks Foundation, Eric Rollison Enterprises, Tulsa Business Association, are all working for a better community. You're watching RBN, the Rollison Broadcasting Network. Welcome to Entertainment Plus, the show that highlights the sights and sounds of the arts. This program is brought to you by the Rollison Foundation, Black Eagle Enterprises, and the Wilson Family. Hi, my name is Leon Rollison, and welcome to the show today. I think you're going to have a marvelous time with us. Well, well now, Leon Rollison Productions, we're ready to bring you some highlights from the Tulsa Jazz Festival on Greenwood. It was a great time, great people, great food, great music. It was a wonderful night. So let's sit back and pick up some of the highlights from the Tulsa Jazz Festival right down on Greenwood. Here we go. That's Harris Swigert, one of the producers of the Jazz Festival. As you can tell, he's a friend of mine. Now let's listen to some good old music dealing with the big band era. Let's tune in. Thank you. 
how about that? The Jazz Festival, great music, great food, and great people. Can't beat that. The Jazz Festival in Tulsa, Oklahoma, on Greenwood. See, there are a lot of people that were at the Jazz Festival. A lot of people indeed. And if you want to contact Star, the vocalist, here's how. Let's talk to one of the stars of the Tom Jonas Show. Miss Dupree is in the house. Okay. What would you like me to tell you, Leon? Just anything you want to tell. Well, I was talking to these people about Mardi Gras having just come from there. And being a native of New Orleans, Mardi Gras to me is a religious experience. And I had a very good time this year. I was telling them that this was the largest Mardi Gras ever. It was very uneventful. Very few people were seriously injured. Tuesday. 
became Sam and observed the Salem holidays of Lent that extend until Easter Sunday. And so the Mardi Gras is a religious holiday. And cake represents... The king cake represents on January 6th, which is the Feast of the Epiphany, celebrating the day that the three kings brought the baby Jesus their gifts. So that's why we, from the day, uh, 12th night is called, or the Epiphany, from that day until Mardi Gras, the day before Lent, that's a special season in the Catholic Church. We celebrate it in New Orleans with the king cake. Inside the king cake is baked a tiny plastic baby. We celebrate every Friday, we have a king cake in each household. We cut it up, whoever gets the piece of cake and has the baby in it, has to buy the next cake. This came from a tradition of French Creole, where black people were educated in Paris, France, because the black people who were Creoles in the city of New Orleans were aristocracy, and they went back to learn craft, and they were educated there. If in the old days, the king cake was served at a party that someone gave in honor of their child who was to go abroad to be educated, back in the day, the cake had baked in it a bean. Whoever got the bean at the party became the patron of the child studying abroad, paid for his education, paid for his, his scholarship, and that's where that tradition came from. I, I, I tell you where the word craps came from, that's New Orleans also. It means, it comes from the phrase Johnny Crapoli, which means Johnny Frogley, which is what they called people who went to France and came back to New Orleans after they studied in France. They would call them froglets because they call French frog. Well, Crapoli in French means froglets. And so Johnny Crapoli was the name they gave to people who studied abroad and came back. They brought their game of dice back from France to New Orleans. So they would say, let's play Johnny Crapoli's game. And that's how dice became known as friends. I'm a fount of wisdom. <laughs> did you have a good time? I sure did. Yes, I, I loved it. I had a great time. Did you have a good time? Yes, I did. <laughs> Well, that's our show for today. We're glad that you were able to join us. Until the next time, we'll see you. My name is Leon Rollison. Bye now. For correspondence, please write us at RBN, Rollison Broadcasting, Television and Radio Network, Post Office Box 3162, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74101. Thanks for watching. Das Journal von DWTV aus Berlin. Ich bin Werner Polenz, herzlich willkommen. Seit nunmehr fast einem Monat greifen US-Kampfflugzeuge Ziele in Afghanistan an. Kritik an fehlenden Erfolgen weist Washington zurück. Von Anfang an hatten die USA klargestellt, der Kampf gegen den Terror wird eine lang andauernde Kampagne sein. In London kamen jetzt die wichtigsten Staats- und Regierungschefs Europas zusammen. Sie wollen Unterstützung für die USA bekunden und ihr weiteres gemeinsames Vorgehen im Kampf gegen den Terror abstimmen. Zu dem Spitzentreffen empfing der britische Premier Blair in seinem Amtssitz in der Downing Street unter anderem Bundeskanzler Schröder und den französischen Präsidenten Chirac. Auch der EU-Koordinator für Sicherheit und Außenpolitik Solana ist dabei. Das Treffen war ursprünglich nur zwischen Großbritannien, Frankreich und Deutschland geplant. Offenbar nach Protesten der anderen europäischen Partner wurde der Kreis der Teilnehmer am EU-Mini-Gipfel erweitert. 
Die USA verstärken ihre Bodentruppen in Afghanistan. Generalstabschef Meyers sagte, mehrere Eliteeinheiten seien den Kämpfern der Nordallianz zur Seite gestellt worden. Zugleich machte Meyers erneut deutlich, dass sich der Kampf gegen die Taliban noch länger hinziehen werde. Auch der Winter werde keine Unterbrechung der Angriffe bringen. US-Verteidigungsminister Rumsfeld zu Gesprächen in Pakistan. Dabei äußerte er sich zufrieden über den bisherigen Verlauf der Militäraktionen gegen das Taliban-Regime. Pakistans Präsident Musharraf versprach den USA Zugang zu Geheimdienstinformationen. Derweil starten Tag- und Nacht Kampfjets zum Einsatz gegen Ziele in Afghanistan. Sie sollen unter anderem auch die Nordallianz bei ihren Kämpfen gegen die Taliban-Stellungen im Norden Afghanistans unterstützen. Seit einer Woche bombardieren die USA Taliban-Stellungen auch im äußersten Norden Afghanistans an der Grenze.